Hello, fourth year students. Uh, this is a new lecture in poetry. Uh, and this is going to be our last poem for uh, this year. This is the last poem for this year. This year, inshallah, this year. And I'm going to be a little bit longer for this year. So I'm going to be a little bit longer for this year. So I'm going to be a little bit longer for this video. I'm going to be a little bit longer for this year. بعدين في فيديو آخر أشرح لكم بقية القصيدة. So uh, our poem today is entitled The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock by T. S. Eliot. And you need to know that T. S. Eliot actually is the most important poet in the modern uh, period. So when we speak about or when we study, when we try to uh, have an idea about modern poetry, we cannot skip T.S. Eliot. You have to study uh, something for him. And the most famous, I guess, uh, poem written by T.S. Eliot is the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Uh, somehow, it, it is a long poem, but you will notice that uh, it has a certain uh, quality of a story. I mean, you are going to see that uh, when you read the poem as if you are reading a story, there, there is a character which is called uh, J. Alfred Prufrock and we are going to see what kind of things this character faces. Uh, before we start with uh, the poem itself, let's have an idea about, uh, let's say the poem, when was the poem written? It was written in in 1910 and published in 1915 so it is uh, in an early time in the modern uh, period it is considered one of the quintessential works of modernism why is it so important to study this poem actually it is important because every quality every aspect of modern life we can see it inside this poem it represents uh, let's say uh, a modern man the difficulties, the, the uh, let's say, the troubles, the problems, the struggles of modern life. Uh, this poem uh, is a good representation for them. Uh, it is a literary movement. Here he's talking about uh, modernism, literary movement at the turn of the 20th century that emphasized themes of alienation. So I want you to pay attention in this poem to these themes. It's very important as you are uh, going to read and analyze the poem, try to uh, to conclude or to realize uh, these themes. Alienation. What does the, this uh, word mean? Alienation. Uh, it, it, it refers to the this feeling that the modern man has uh, in, in living in the modern society. Uh, modern man feels that he is far away from people, although he's living in the middle of society, but he still can't uh, get along with people, get along with society. Uh, also, I want you to focus on isolation. So alienation, isolation, and the diminishing power of the traditional sources of authority. You see, uh, and here what we mean by traditional sources of authority, for example, religion, uh, we can say, for example, social traditions, يعني مثل ما نقول إحنا الدين أو العادات الاجتماعية أو التقاليد الاجتماعية كان لها سلطة أو كان كانت مرجعية بالنسبة للناس ولكن في العصر الحديث هاي الأشياء بدت يعني أهميتها أو سلطتها أو سطوتها على الناس تختفي تدريجيا. The poem is a dramatic monologue and I want you also to pay attention to this one. Dramatic monologue. And let me highlight. This one for you here. Dramatic monologue. What do you mean by dramatic? Monologue, of course, you know monologue. Uh, it means that just one person is talking to himself. Uh, my last duchess. You remember that poem? We said that it can consider it can be considered as what as a dramatic monologue. There is just one person speaking. And why is it called dramatic? Because we have this element of storytelling. You see, there is a drama. There are certain maybe actions, characters, themes. Uh, that's why it's called dramatic monologue. So we are going to see that uh, we, we are inside the mind or the head of a character and we are listening or we are hearing 
what this character is saying. So uh, please pay attention to this point that uh, this poem is an example of dramatic monologue in which this speaker narrates the anxieties and preoccupations of his inner life. Okay? يعني قبل لا نبدا بالقصيده عندكم تنتبهون لهاي الفكره since the poem is really long uh, maybe at certain point you feel lost what is he talking about just put in mind before we start with the poem just put in your mind that the whole time we are inside the head of this character which is uh, sorry who is uh, proof rock we are inside proof rock's head we are listening to his thoughts ideas uh, let's say his anxieties we are living inside him and this is if you remember this is one of the main qualities of the modern literature that instead of having someone telling us about the characters narrating things about the life of the characters we are in, in the modern literature the writer or the poet puts us inside the character itself we are living inside the head of the character we are listening to his inner thoughts يعني كأنما إحنا داخل عقل هذا هاي الشخصية ونشوف تسلسل الأفكار كيف يكون. And usually these ideas are not arranged in a certain sequence. They are just random thoughts. يعني شو الإنسان عادة يكون جالس وين بسيع تجي أفكار الأفكار مو شرط تكون مرتبة. You have to also consider this. Ideas, especially when we are just you see you are thinking or uh, maybe just uh, having uh, random thoughts you see so uh, that's why at certain point when you read the poem you feel that maybe you can't understand what the uh, let's say the poet is saying that's because he is just giving us fragments from his thoughts you see okay so uh, before we start with the poem if you go to the poem in your handout you will see that in the beginning there is this uh, quotation which is which we called epigraph epigraph what do you mean by epigraph sometimes writers before they start with let's say the poem uh, the chapter in a novel uh, in their work generally they start with a quotation which is taken from another work of literature some quotation uh, why do they do this? Because there is certain idea in this quotation which is related to the content, to the story maybe, or to the poem, okay? So here, what did Eliot do? He took this epigraph from where? From Dante's Inferno. And you are also familiar with Dante. You have studied Dante in literary criticism. Dante bin Naqid akhadna. وقلنا هو كان عنده كتاب الكوميديا الإلهية. So T.S. Eliot took from the Inferno this quotation here, and this is in Italian. The quotation is directly taken from the uh, Italian uh, version of the book, and here is the English translation of this. So let's see what this quotation is about. If I thought that my reply would be to someone who would ever return to earth, this flame would remain without further movement. But as no one has ever returned alive from this gulf, if what I hear is true, I can answer you with no fear of infamy. So this is the translation, the English translation of this quotation in Italian, which is taken from where? From Dante's Inferno. What does it mean? Let's try to understand this. So here we have a speaker. Okay. He, he's, talk, he's talking about himself. If I thought... Uh, just let's remind ourselves uh, in Dante's Inferno, we have the character of... Uh, the character of Dante himself, who visits hell تعرفون هاي القصة انه هو صعد يزور ال يزور الجحيم يزور الفردوس so in, in, in the inferno اللي هي الجحيم in hell he met a character sorry he met this character from hell يعني شخصية منين 
يعني اثناء ذهابه او صعوده الى الجحيم قابل شخصيه من الشخصيات الموجوده بالجحيم what did this character say to him it says if i thought so the, the character this character from hell uh, wants to tell dante something but this thing seems to be so serious so dangerous maybe it is a secret so it is not easy to to say it to anyone but what did this uh, character say he said i know if if i know that anyone who comes to hell can get out of it i would not say or i would not tell them the secret okay so he thought that dante because he came to 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 the inferno is not going to leave it he's not uh, able to leave uh, hell so he wants to speak this secret to him uh, but he said if i ever know that you are able to go back to earth and leave uh, hell i i can't tell you this secret because it is something very serious maybe it is going to disgrace him maybe it is something bad or uh, something uh, infamous that he has done okay so you might ask what is the relation between this quotation and the poem actually uh, the main relation that we can find between this quotation and the poem is the idea of having what having a listener so sometimes people don't speak to others why because they believe that people can't listen to them uh, you know the difference between listening and hearing يعني اكو شخص مثلا هو يسمعك ولكن اكو شخص يستمع يعني يسمعك هو مجرد يسمع انت شنو يعني يدري بيك تتكلم فيسمع كلامك ولكن اكو شخص يتعمد يستمع listening to listen to someone means that you are paying them attention you are paying attention to what they want to say the things that they want to uh, tell you about so here uh, what we understand from this quotation or what is so important for us as we are going to read the poem is to focus on the idea of what listening proof rock the main character has some has something to say he wants to to tell us something okay so he wants a listener to what he wants to say and let's see what is this thing that proof rock is so eager to tell let's see here we are starting with the poem طبعا هنا تدرون هاي الجهه عندنا نص القصيده ومن هاي الجهه ايضا اكو بعض الملاحظات او الشرح okay so let's start it says let us go then you and i when the evening is spread when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient authorized upon a table let us go then you and i see so the, the speaker is giving uh, an invitation and probably he's inviting us as as we are uh, readers or maybe there is someone uh, with him we, we are not sure okay so he's inviting us so he wants to go somewhere okay and he's here he's describing what he's describing the evening so what time is it it is in the evening the the uh, let's say the setting of the poem the time is in in the evening when the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient authorized upon a table so the the atmosphere what is it like you see the the uh, the comparison here between the evening and patient as if the, the atmosphere of the place uh, or let's say the the city in which uh, uh, he's walking in the streets uh, they, they give this uh, feeling of sickness you see the it seems that the atmosphere is not a really good one here let us go through certain half deserted streets streets so when you see when you hear this word streets what does it mean it means that we are here in the city it is not some somewhere in the countryside or maybe in a village no it is a city and it is a modern city يعني هاي القصيده تحدث وين في وحده من المدن الحديثه مدينه بها كل الصفات اللي تميز المدن الحديثه and we have half deserted what does it mean half deserted 
means that there are no more, uh, let's say there, there is no, uh, not many people walking around, you see? The muttering retreats of restless nights. So the speaker, you see from the beginning, he's giving us this feeling that he's not actually feeling good. He's going to visit someone maybe or going somewhere, but he's not really comfortable. Okay, restless nights in one night cheap hotels. So what do you what do you see in the streets as you are going uh, to 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 make your visit? You of course have these streets, hotels, restaurants, so dust restaurants, cheap, empty, semi-empty uh, restaurants. So what kind of place it is? It is actually a very typical modern city. يعني هاي المدن الحديثة اللي خلينا نقول تتميز إنه هي برغم من كثرة ال خلينا نقول عدد السكان بها ولكن هي فاقدة للحياة. Streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question. So walking through these streets can actually make you start to have what thoughts, ideas, even they lead you to what to ask questions. Oh, don't ask what it is. What, what, sorry, what is it? Let's go and make our visit. So our speaker here is confused, not comfortable. He, he's, he's not really in a good uh, mood. So you see, uh, the walk in these streets urge the speaker to ask a question, but he insists insist on going on, sorry, to the destination he wants to visit. So of course the speaker here, you know who he is. He is a proof rock. And till now we know that he is going to visit someone and this visit is happening at which time? In the evening and it is in a modern city. Okay. In the room the women come and go talking of Michelangelo. So in the destination, in the place where he's going to, there are women. Okay, maybe he's going to visit some lady. What are these women doing? They come and go inside the rooms and what are they talking about? Talking about Michelangelo. What does this tell us? The speaker thinks of the people in the place he's visiting. They are women and they are busy talking about Michelangelo, who is a Renaissance painter. This indicates what? This indicates that they are wealthy, aristocratic women talking about art. Of course, because they are uh, maybe so wealthy, educated women. So they speak about art and things. Uh, of course, if they are poor, for example, they would not speak about such things. So what kind of people he's going to visit? He's going to visit people from, let's say, from the upper class. Uh, wealthy and they are women you have to pay attention to this part also they are women he actually is going to visit this woman and he wants particularly to talk to one of them and we'll see if he's able to do that now now let's see see how he jumps from one idea into another he jumps from one thought to another the yellow fog that drops its back upon the window panes, the yellow smoke. Notice here, yellow fog, yellow smoke. Why is it yellow? Why is choosing this color particularly? When we say yellow smoke, yellow fog, when you try to imagine it, you see, we are talking about modern city. And one of the main characteristics of modern life and modern city is pollution. You see? So maybe this is a very good reference to pollution. The yellow smoke that drops its muzzle on the window panes licked its tongue into the sorry the corners of the evening, lingered upon the pools that stand in drains. Let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys. So he's describing the streets that he is walking in. يعني هو في طريقة إلى خلينا نقول هذا المكان. فدي يوصف الشوارع المكان البيئة الأجواء كيف تكون. and if you notice here uh, لاحظوا هنا الملاحظة in the next stanza the poet moves into another idea. 
طبعا هذا هو اللي احنا عرفناه stream of consciousness he thinks of the yellow fog outside as if it's a creature لاحظوا هاي الأوصاف muzzle it drops its back you see licked its tongue of course the, the smoke and the fog they don't have tongue they don't have back they, they don't have muzzle these things we find for example in cats in, in creatures in normal creatures so he's tr making a comparison uh, you see as if it is a creature and it is spreading everywhere you can find it everywhere on the windows on drains on pools you see يعني كان ما يوصف لنا هاي الأجواء التلوث أو الأجواء خلينا نقول الكئيبة الموجودة أحيانا بالمدن منتشرة في كل مكان. Slipped by the terrorists made a sudden leap. Usually what, what, what creature does these things? It's cats. We, we find cats everywhere in, in cities. And seeing that it was a soft October night. So at what time of the year? It is October. It is in the autumn. Curled once about the house and fell asleep. Okay, so this is mainly a description of the streets that he was passing through. Now, look at this. Here, there's a, a painter who actually painted the things we we have in this poem. لاحظوا هنا يعني هاي كوب فنانة رسمت القصيدة يعني حولتها كأنها قصة مصورة. You see, so this is our character here. هذا هو Poor Frog. طبعاً مسوين يشبه تياس إليت. He's preparing himself to go. What? To le let's go and make our visit. He's preparing himself to go outside. And these, so you see, these are the women, and they are talking about Michael Angelo. And see here, he's he's talking about, or he's describing these streets that he's. Walking in, you see the yellow fog that drops its back upon the window panes. Here we have this. This is the yellow smoke and the yellow fog. It is something, it is here painted as if it is a creature. You see, it has this tongue lingered on the pools that stand. And then here it, what, what does it do? It fall upon its back. Slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap. لاحظوا هاي يعني كأنه ما كان ما نتخيل. لا تشوفون هاي الصورة تمثل هذا الوصف. Okay. Next. And indeed, there will be time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street, rubbing its back upon upon the window panes. There will be time. There will be time. Notice here. How many times did he repeat this sentence? You see, إحنا قلنا الأفكار بال بالذهن بالعقل ما تكون مرتبة تكون مشوشة. So sometimes the you're you're going to see that the poet keeps what repeating lines, certain lines. He keeps repeating them many times. There will be time. There will be time. Time for what? You see, there will be time to prepare to meet people. Actually, he he feels. That he's not ready. He's somehow still confused. Not ready to uh, meet other people, to speak to other people. يعني عنده نوع من التردد. See, there will be time. شايفين واحد من يريد يأجل موضوع أو يأخر مسألة شو يقول بعد أكو وقت أكو يعني. There will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet. Does it mean to prepare a face? Here, actually, this is an indication of what. That human relations usually are governed with what? Hypocrisy. Nifaq. يعني الإنسان مضطرع دائما هو يلبس وجه to prepare a face so that you can meet other people, other pe uh, faces. So modern life, modern people. What do we have in, in, in this uh, new modern life? People are not honest. They hide behind false appearances. Okay? Nifaq يعني. There will be time, لاحظوا مرة أخرى أيضا, to murder and create, and time for all the works and days of hands, that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you and time for me, and time yet for a hundred indecisions, and for a hundred visions and revisions. You see, there will be time. يعني هو قاعد يأجل. أكو شغلة ريدي سويها. 
او اكو في مساله معينه يريد او فعل معين يريد يقوم به and before doing this he's just thinking there will be time maybe i should think again maybe i should not do this maybe look what is this thing that he wants to do before the taking of a toast and tea and you see something really uh, simple and trivial why would he stop and think before doing it يعني هو هذا كل التفكير وشلون هسه اعيد من جديد خاف ما يصير شنو الفعل اللي يريد يقوم به فعل بسيط جدا to eat something toast ياكل توست شنو يشرب الشاي so trivial this is to show that even the simplest ideas or the simplest actions requires uh, thinking uh, this is to show to what extent modern man is really confused اكو انسان عنده انعدام ثقه بالنفس لدرجه انه يحتاج يفكر حتى قبل ما يقوم بابسط الافعال الى اي درجه هذا الانسان مشوه نفسيا you see so there will be time to hundreds of ideas thoughts questions and indecisions before doing any action even if it is a very simple action like drinking a cup of tea and eating a toast the speaker is so hesitant and confused moreover he's deeply immersed in his own thoughts you see so proof rock all the time as he is going to make his visit he thinks of a lot of things uh, he has a lot of ideas in his mind and mostly he is hesitant and confused again and there are here you see time for you and time for me and the and time yet for a hundred indecisions so he wants to speak to this lady you see but he's thinking can I speak to her no oh, there will be time because he's hesitant confused okay شوف هاي الصور هي طبعا كلها يعني محاولة تجسيد القصة يعني بشكل مصور and indeed there will be time شوف ايش كم مرة عاد هاي العبارة there will be time to wonder do I dare and do I dare هل اجرؤ لاحظوا هذا السؤال he believes that doing something like this for example talking to the lady requires courage requires him to be daring the speaker has reached to the destination but before going in he stops and asks himself questions do i dare to go inside he even consider descending the stair and going back يعني هو متردد حتى انه ادخل لا ما ادخل ارجع you see to what extent he uh, is hesitant time to turn back and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair they will say how his hair is growing thin so what what keeps the speaker so confused why he can't go inside the reason he is so hesitant is the fear of being judged based on his appearance then he goes in the world of the modern times people judge others based on their appearances and our speaker here he is bald bald he is bald so he fears that the women inside will notice that and will say his hair is thin he's afraid from people's comments and judgments about his appearance okay my morning coat, my collar mounting firmly to the, to the chin. They are going to judge his clothes. Malabse. Okay. My necktie, rich and modest, but asserted by a simple, simple pin. They will say, but how his arms and legs are thin. They are going to judge his, also his body. He's, he's very thin. Okay. They will comment on the way he dresses. They will comment on his thin body. And again, he goes back to the same question. Do I dare disturb the universe? So the speaker is uh, so worried, so concerned to the extent that he believes that what he is doing is going to disturb the universe. 
he's exaggerating of course here he compares his own fears uh, and worrying to what as if it is something that he's going uh, if he if he does this thing he's going to uh, affect or influence the whole universe by doing it okay he thinks that what he is about to do could disturb the universe although it is a very trivial thing how can it disturb the universe okay in a minute there is time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse you see at a, at a certain time you decide something and then you decide something opposite to it يعني شوف الإنسان شقد صاير بحالة تردد وحيرة يقرر شيء وفجأة يعكس يعني يقول أنا لا حسوي العكس for I have known them all already known them all منهم وذول اللي يعرفهم known them all he's talking about the people he's going to meet he says I know people I know how people judge others okay again the speaker thinks of decisions that he will reverse in a minute he lacks confidence. He claims that he knows how people judge others. He even lacks a clear sense of time. I have known the evenings, mornings, afternoons. Mornings, afternoons, and then evenings. So our speaker even thinks that there is no clear uh, division of time يعني عنده شوية الوقت حتى uh, uh, ترتيب معين his life is an, uh, sorry is as insignificant as a coffee spoon you see I have measured out my life with coffee spoons يعني شقد حياته ما لها قيمة بالنسبة له he, to the extent that he measures his life with a coffee spoon. It is not something, of course, to measure life with. I know the voices dying with a dying fall. I know the people how they speak. I have listened to them. Okay. I know the voices of people. So how should I, how should I go? Okay. Beneath the music from a father room. So how should I presume? Inside his head. And I have known the eyes already, known them all. The eyes, people when they look at you, when they are judging you and they start looking at you from the top of your head to the bottom of your uh, toes. شايفين هاي النظرة الناس من ينظرون الشخص يعني من خلال هاي النظرة يطلقون عليه الأحكام. Okay, the eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase. People's eye when they look at you. They fix you with a certain judgment. And when I am formulated, sprawling on a pin, يعني كان ما يلزمون مثلا خلينا نقول pin, تعرفون شنو pin دبوس ويثبتون الشخص بصورة ثابتة يخلوا له. When I am pinned and wriggling on the wall, then how should I begin? Where do we, uh, sorry, where do we see such thing as fixing something with a pin? Usually we find insects. شايفين هالحشرات اللي يثبتوها بدبوس بالمتحف مثلا المتاحف العلمية. So uh, you see, our speaker here actually feels that his life is insignificant, just like an insect. People can't uh, appreciate and respect him. People in in the modern society they lack. Uh, respect and appreciation to others' lives. To spit out all the pot ends of my days and ways, and how should I presume? So if I want to start speaking, I met this lady and I want to start to, uh, to speak to her. What should I speak about? About my, my uh, life? About my days? My insignificant life? You see? Again, here we have this picture. You see, this is how he, he looks. This is his appearance, you see. And here he's afraid. You see this woman? He, he's afraid that maybe as he was uh, standing here, uh, the woman start talking about him. Look how thin he is. Look at his arms. See, do I dare disturb the universe? 
as if going inside is doing something that will affect the universe here uh, this is about time this one uh, I have measured out my life with coffee spoons I know the voice is dying with a dying fall you see he, he is really concerned about how people look at him okay so how should I presume and I have known the arms already known them all arms that are braceleted and white and bare he knows also the, the people he's going to meet and of course here here he's referring to the women because you see braceleted of course he's talking about women white and bare and of course uh, he's, he's referring to the women what in the lamplight downed with light brown hair so things actually don't uh, don't uh, or say sorry they are not as beautiful as they seem from the outside appearance are deceiving when you look closely you can discover the the defects is it perfume from a dress that makes me so digress and i already know what women are like I've known all kinds of women, those who, whose arms are covered with bracelets and have pale, hairless skin. Yani they look very beautiful. Although in the lamplight, I can see that their arms are covered in light brown hair. Yani things don't, uh, don't seem as uh, beautiful as they are. Is it the smell of perfume from a dress that makes me lose my train of thought? I am thinking of arms resting on a table or wrapped up with a shawl. So what gives me the right and how should I begin? How should I start talking to this lady? Shall I say I have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in shirt sleeves leaning out of windows? So if I started talking what is the topic I can speak about? Sh should I speak about what I saw as I was coming? The people I met on the street, the, the men, I saw them uh, smoking pipes. You see, he, 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 he even can't uh, find the suitable topics to speak about. So should I start by talking about streets I walked in? As I was coming to this place where I only saw lonely men smoking pipes and looking out from windows, it is not something interesting to talk about, actually. I should have been a pair of fragged clothes scuttling across the floors of silences. So he's really confused about his own situation to the extent that he wishes he was a creature in the sea rather than being in this situation يعني نتمنى لو كان كائن بحري او اي كائن اخر بس المهم ما يكون بهذا الوضع اللي هو ما ما يعرف شلون يتصرف the speaker wishes that he was another creature with clothes a sea crab لاحظوا اي مخلوق اختار a sea crab هذا السلطعون البحري اللي عنده صدفه that can roam silently in the seas and hide inside its shell you see, يعني هو اختار هذا هذا المخلوق بالتحديد ليش لأن عنده القدرة على إنه يخفي نفسه داخل قوقعة. So maybe the speaker actually wants to hide in this situation instead of not being able to speak. This indicates his confusion and lack of confidence. وهاي هي الصورة الأخيرة أو قبل الأخيرة خلينا نقول. See. Uh, here he's talking about how people fix him in a certain. لاحظوا هنا أنا. As if he's fixed with a pin to the wall, you see, wriggling on the wall. يعني هاي الناس لما ت يعني تثبت في صورة معينة على الشخص. Okay, so how can I speak? How can I talk to the women? What are the things I can speak about? Okay, shall I speak about the streets where men, where I saw men uh, smoking uh, pipes? Sorry. And as he was sitting with the lady, unable to speak to her, what did he think? He thought, what if I am a crab? Just like this one. You see, this one, crab, uh, have been a pair of fragged clothes. 
roaming silently in the seas okay so uh, then hi here خلينا نقول هذا الشرح القصيدة نصها تقريبا والنص الآخر إن شاء الله نكمله في محاضرة أخرى شكرا